Hey, what's going everyone? This is uh, Kevin Daniels with See Now, The Worship Table. And we're gonna sit, I've got some amazing worship leaders. I let them introduce themselves. We're gonna sit and we're gonna have an open conversation about just what we do, what we do and how we do it. So introduce yourselves. Hi, I am Marcy Priest Jackson from Victory Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. I'm Grant Adams and I serve on staff at North Point Baptist Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. And my name is Aaron Burns, and I am the Worship and Creative Arts Pastor at South Point Church in South Oklahoma City. Man, thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate hey, just it. real quick, um, how did you guys get into worship? Like, how did, how did, this, how did this start? Oof, that's a good one. That, that's a long story. Let's do it. Um, so I, I would say for me, um, it all started, I was in, I think, uh, ninth grade, and I'd been home from si oh, home from school for like a week straight because I was sick, you know. And uh, my brother had a little digital keyboard in his room that I started just kind of like messing around on, and uh, discovered that I, I kind of had a little bit of an ear for music, and um, not much, but a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and so one thing led to another. People at church kind of started hearing, "Oh, Grant's getting into music," you know. And so one thing led to another, and um, that led to joining a you know youth band, which I was yes. horrible at. Like didn't know the chords to the songs the day of Come kind on. of a thing, you know. Uh, not not that I didn't know the song, I didn't know how to play the chord, <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. But that you know led one thing led to another. Uh, a lot of chapters um, from that to now, but that's kind of the, the beginning of it is church youth band. Yeah, uh, and just playing with friends. That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. What about you, Marcy? Oh well, Kevin. <laughs> You and I have something in common, you know, because we grew up in the ministry. Come on, PKs Come on. all day. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just, it's inside of you. And, um, but I, you know, uh, my first experiences with worship were in the back seat uh, with my parents in the front seat. And I'm carrying the melody and my parents are singing harmonies. Come on. That's awesome. Come on. And uh, I so I, I just had kind of a love of worship music from those experiences and then about seventh grade um when my dad started a church in oklahoma city um he was needing some help and so he invited me i think that's why i got like a superstar because there wasn't a lot of options <laughs> so so i got to be brought in to the worship team and i would do kind of specials first yes. and then uh, later on remember specials <laughs> Special. and then um and then later on more a part of the worship team usually more with youth and um and what a great place to start that is yeah. you know there's so much grace there i feel like and especially if you have it depends on who you're under but if they believe in you mm -hmm. and are encouraging you like um yeah. it can really uh, be a safe place to grow and so, um, yeah, that was where I started. And then just, you know, gradually into Sunday mornings, nice. part yeah. of my parents' That's church. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. PKs, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. What about you, Aaron? I, uh, I joined a band when I was 13 years old Yeah. At, from summer camp. We joined a band and we uh, started playing Switchfoot covers. Ooh, and so, absolutely. like, I was my favorite. Dude, absolutely. Dude, the greatest. Uh, man, I just saw them and they came out and they played the whole, oh, There's great. nobody like them. No, just, no one. I'm sorry. And so that that like kind of got my foot in the door as far as music went, and and later on down the road, you know, I ended up on tour with a band, and really enjoying music, and and uh, just felt the call from the Lord, like this is this is where you're supposed to be, and uh, just got connected into worship that way, and really, it's all been downhill from there. Yeah, I love how you know each of you guys are you know respected leaders at your own churches, and you know. I can see where, you know, even being in youth, you kind of receive that call and it kind of just carries you out. Um, speaking of like hearing from the Lord, how do you guys hear from the Lord even now? Even even now, you know, how do you still keep that fire that kind of brought you into this worship space? How do you keep that alive Sunday to Sunday? Um, yeah. And I think it's important to um, always think of it as like, is your cup filled to the brim? And, and what I mean by that is Sunday morning should be from the overflow. Yeah. And just any time we're, we're on the platform in any capacity is the overflow. And um, so really for me, it's just spending time in his presence, whatever that looks like. If, it, you know, prayer, reading my Bible, you know, worshiping, spending time mm -hmm. with my kids worshiping. Man, I, I don't know if you guys are 
all parents, you guys get. Uh, are you a parent? I, I am a parent. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I, uh, I just assume assumed that. you have the fatherly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you saying I have a, but, like a dad? Saying I'm saying that's, that's a good. Uh, but <laughs> spending for some reason, spending time with my kids. Yeah. Uh, there is something spiritual. The Holy Spirit is always there. Yeah. I feel His presence when I'm with my kids, mm-hmm. and so uh, and uh, so just spending time. With, with him on a, on a regular basis. That's so good. And uh, I always tell my team that, I'll, my my team, like, if you come with an empty cup, man, how much can you pour out? How much how much yeah. do you have left in the tank? And that's why it's just so important to just stay yeah. connected. Stay connected. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, well, everything Aaron said. <laughs> um, I would say, too, one thing I've realized in the last year or so, specifically for me, is that it's important for me to have times of worship not on the stage. And you you said that. Um, But times where I'm not the one in charge, I'm not the one coordinating things, picking songs, not even on stage, just in the room with people um, so that I can, in turn, get my cup filled up. Um, It's very, very easy for us as leaders to constantly outpour and outpour Mm -hmm. week after week after week after week. Um, But there comes a point when we need to just be believers (laughs) first um, and worship leaders second. And so, um, yeah, that's been something that for me in the last, I'd say probably the last nine months to a year, I've really, I knew that, but um, had to walk through it to fully understand it mm-hmm. um, yeah. so yeah yeah so good i think i've definitely like early on um uh my worship leading like i talked about those earlier years it was very much a i have something to give you know mm-hmm. and i have a i have something to perform and if i can just perform good enough then you're gonna love Jesus. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um, so I think for me, it's been a an unlearning of that and being around, you know, learning to hear God. I think also what was helpful to me was being around some mentors that I saw live it out in front of me. And um, one of my heroes, Trent Austin, Come on. Um, God strategically put me in his path in a time when I really thought all I have is something to give and I didn't really think I had much probably to learn or receive, and that is being honest. <laughs> I think also yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you just surround, you surround yourself by nothing challenging, yeah. and then you get around somebody that you're like, oh, he doesn't actually care about all the things that I care about and all the, um, all the show and the performance mm-hmm. and who's watching him, and he would do this by himself, exactly what you said. He would. He is doing this by himself with the Lord, and um, and so unlearning a lot of things, and then learning that uh, over the last ten years, learning that I can like exactly your question. I can hear God mm-hmm. for myself, but a lot of times because I was around such great worship leaders, um, that I mean, great worship leaders like they were worshipers first. They were yeah. great examples. I started to fear that I couldn't hear God like they could Mm. and um i started feeling a different performance mentality like i'm not the same as them and what if what Mm -hmm. if what if you know what if i don't hear like they hear and and so god kind of gave me this um word through someone that said you know i just see you um i they got this picture for me that they said i just see you on the playground and um, you're just having fun. You're just trying different things, like you're swinging and, and sliding and doing different things. And they said, and, and you're just with, with Jesus, and he's just enjoying you. And um, I thought, that's, it. that's the least that I feel. That's not how I feel at all. And God used that. Um, he started showing me that picture when I would be um, standing on the platform, and I would start to feel that fear and that expectation and that performance I need to live up to something. And he would just say, we're just on the playground together. Yeah. We're just having fun. Yeah. We're just in this. Well, this is just a relationship and i love you and i just i could just take a deep sigh and move from that place of being a daughter and being loved and he just i'm sure you agree he just does his his thing Mm -hmm. when we're in that place yeah (laughs) Yeah. there's so much freedom in just 
knowing like I'm just a child. Yeah. Like, I'm just his child. I'm just his kid. I'm just his prized possession. Like it, there's there's something freeing that that comes and 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 when you when you strive, I know we've used that language before, but when you strive and you and you try to to get to this place where well I want want this to happen, Lord, I, I want this to to move and and I want these people to to worship like never before. You, you find yourself again trying to perform, trying to like take four steps, to, yeah. trying to strive, and yes. the Lord is just we're on the playground. Um, yeah. I, I I love this. What I'm hearing, and uh, if if I could use this this term, uh, there's a lot of uh, I've you know I've, I've even gone through this season where I've been an orphan worship leader. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Where I'm a, where I'm an orphan, where I'm 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 looking at every worship leader and I'm comparing and oh my god, look at this oil that they have and look what they can do and look at oh my gosh, look at how 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 the, how the room responds yeah. in forgetting that I'm a son and if I operate just from that seat alone. Right. Yes. Like God can do so much more with that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of orphan worship leaders out there. And I think they, you know, is, this is very true for worship leaders. Uh, we can get into this mode of comparison. Right. Oh, yeah. And it steals so much joy from us. Still so much joy. Uh, I loved hearing each one of you talk about just like as a child and how, you know, mm -hmm. I got into a band here and, and I just started serving in my church here. And my dad started putting me up for specials here. <laughs> and there was a joy in that, right? There, right? there was an innocence and a joy in that. There that sometimes was. as we, we grow in ministry and as we kind of do in ministry, we kind of lose that joy of just coming to the Father as a child, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Humbly, open, honest, loving, um, and gentle spirited. So. Mm. Um, I, I love that. Thank you for all for sharing that. I got a couple more questions and, and feel free to jump in at any given time. Um, this is interesting. How do you guys pick out your sets? This is like a, a quick a quick pivot shift to something different because I think there's something to um, that that um, that hearing from the Lord that we were just talking yeah. about um, when we're prepping and, and getting ready for for Sunday mornings. Yeah. How do you how do you guys hear from the Lord um, to, to prepare for Sunday mornings? I know you mentioned a few things, but uh, there, there, I know there's more to that. Can we unpack that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. I mean, for our team and for, for me personally, um, we we try to build our sets around whatever the message is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want not just the song, I mean, the whole service from videos to testimonies to even like if we can somehow incorporate giving into a message yeah. also or whatever the message is. Uh, we try to try to build the whole service um, around that. And so for, specifically with songs, um, for us, it starts with um, a conversation with the pastor. Like, hey, what's, you know, what's your main idea for this week? What are you wanting the people to, to walk away with? What do you feel like God is, is telling you? Um, and so that for us drives, okay, here's, here's the main idea. What can we do musically, sonically, lyrically to support that um, and build on the whole idea yeah. that's trying to be um, conveyed for a is, week? Is there, um, mm -hmm. and I want you guys to answer this, but I want to ask you this question, and maybe you guys can answer as well. Um, what about the tension with, you know, sometimes coming on the back ends of Sundays, I know some pastors are like, hey, I, I just need, I need a reset before I get back into the next week. But we also have teams. We have teams that we have to fully equip for the week right. prior to. And so how how do you guys navigate that tension of, hey, I need to get resources out to my team, but I also want to wait on my pastor right. to give some mm -hmm. direction. But maybe he's not ready for that. Because I yeah. think I work with Marcy a lot of times, and our pastor, he's like, plan without me. Mm. He's like, just plan. Just plan. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure it out and reset, and I'm seeking the Lord. And so I just want yeah. you to move, yeah. you know, with just just move. How do you guys navigate that tension? I think uh, for us, so everything shifted a couple years ago. We had one of our lead pastors came and brought us this, uh, this, this thing called Appreciative Inquiry, where we looked at all the things, everything we were doing as a church, and, and just kind of shifted it to be just a little bit more intentional. You know, you, you mentioned that, that tension. I think there's, there's good tension, there's bad tension. And I, I felt like it, it, it brought enough tension that it got the best out of us, if, if you will. Yeah. And so everything shifted for me as a, as a worship pastor then is um, I, just to be honest with you, when I picked out songs, it was like, okay, well, what is, what works key wise? Oh, yeah. What, mm -hmm. what works for yeah. this person's voice? This and Smooth I think, transitions. I think that yeah. plays a part. I think yeah. it does, but it still plays a part, but um, everything shifted when, uh, you know, 
the intentionality behind like what series are we in? We, mm-hmm. we do our church does like a month long series each month. What series are we into? Or what's the end goal? What is the goal? Mm-hmm. You know, for for Sunday morning, you know, community worship. And I think that the the intentionality behind that and then putting teeth to um okay, so what what does that look like? Is you know, do we want something more familiar? Do we want something um, you know, that is just feeding into the message? Because I think that that plays mm-hmm. a part, like specifically for my church. But really, um, we kind of categorize our songs with like, is this to Jesus? Is this to self? Or is this to the world? And um, And I think that for us, all of our sets have to have some sort of familiarity. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, and then we have to sing to Jesus. Yeah. If there's a worship set that's not to Jesus, I feel like I've missed the mark. Yeah. And there's there's been plenty of them. But <laughs> I think that there's a place for songs to edify ourselves as well. Mm-hmm. And um, like I think of a, I think of trust in God. Yeah. Uh, it's a that's a song that our church loves Come so on. much. It's a, it's an edifying song, you know. Yeah. And then but but what's good about it is. Um, you know that the bridge. I sought the Lord, mm-hmm. and He heard and He answered. Mm. Like so, and then I'm 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 edifying myself, and then I'm remembering the history that I have with the Lord, and I'm yeah. fixing my eyes back. So really, it's it's to Jesus too. So yeah. everything everything we has been shifted to be a little bit more intentional. Right. Yes, about the about the series, um, but I think our our teams they get the songs about a month and a half in advance. That's good. Um, but there's also a lot of change from yeah. week to week. And I think that like our scheduling is first and third, second and fourth for mm-hmm. the most part. And so um, as long as I'm at least three weeks out, um, it gives them a chance to like That's good. look ahead. Because if you're scheduled you know, this Sunday and then you're scheduled in two Sundays, you're really probably not looking at that set. You're, you're focused on, yeah. on this set. Mm-hmm. So That's good. I like that. Well, you know, so uh, I'm not, I, I'm currently not leading every weekend. So it's uh, about once or twice a month that I'm leading at my campus. So I kind of have a unique situation where I'm sharing the role with um, another amazing worship yeah. leader, Stephen. Yeah. Stephen Jeffrey, we were talking about. And so, um, and then as Kevin said, we are on a global team together. So, I am just, um, and I am a passionate person. I get excited about things. I get excited about songs. I'm just like, oh, this has to have it. You know, this song, I can feel it. <laughs> mm. And um, and the Lord is really, uh, you know, shaping my ability to walk in humility Same. and walk as a team and mm. walk unified mm. and um that he is going to be more honored and gain uh, more worship and glory in my attitude and my humility yeah. than whether or not we do this song. Mm-hmm. Do you hear me? <laughs> Preach. But I'm going to say that that is a death. Yes, yes. I'm <laughs> that there, is though. a death. Yeah. Um, and I, so <laughs> that is just being real. Yeah. That's why we're here, right? I, I love that you said that, Marcy, because... <laughs> Here's here's one thing that uh, you said that I really love. Um, you're gonna like walk as a team, move as yes. a team. Um, this is so. I think this is so important um, for not necessarily worship pastors, but worship team members to recognize yeah. that hey, we we move as a team. Mm-hmm. We move as a team. I tell my team often that uh, the Holy Spirit does not move where authority is disrespected. Mm-hmm. And so when our pastor gives some direction and clarity, listen, we mm-hmm. man. I, I take whatever my issue is up, Lord, work on my heart first, yes. yep. but I, I am obedient. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so obedient. And I think that is, um, that's something that really helps in, in our church culture with the spirit moving, because I, I believe my team and our teams recognize that we, we're going to move in obedience however we move. Right. Whatever we're singing, we're going to do that in obedience to the Lord first and foremost. Yeah. But then the, the leadership that we're submitting under, I think that is God is a God of order. It's true. And I think that plays a major part into it. And I think we're, we're very, I mean, I'm very grateful to be, um, to be led by um, leadership and pastors that 
really um, trust us. Mm -hmm. And they, I think when you're in a situation where you feel trusted, Mm -hmm. um, that you can um, use your voice, but you can also rest and know that like not, I think that the invitation for offense is always uh, there. Mm -hmm. And um, and that is the enemy. Mm -hmm. And um, because why would we, why would we let offense and disunity and creating a worship set? I mean, yeah. just saying it out yeah. loud is embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's real. Yeah. Because yeah. why would um, the enemy want us to yeah. have unity in worship? Because um, he knows how powerful it is. Yeah. And so uh, God is teaching me that. So, so the way that I, in answer to your question, um, in Picking a worship set. I mean, I love the journey of yeah. worship. My, you know, my friends. Believe no, it, I was trying to lead to you to say this. Specific oh, okay, right thanks. So I yeah, like, I just look. Kevin knows how I love a journey. Yeah. Yes, listen. Kevin knows. Uh. I love a journey, and so I, I like to see, um, I like to see this worship experience um, heading, heading in a direction with mindful of what the pastor is going to be speaking about, and I love to have. Um, I try to be intentional having the gospel in the worship yeah. and um, uh, starting with praise and um, usually a place of repentance and searching inward, you know, these confessional moments in worship and just kind of having this journey just like I have with the Lord, you know, that taking the, bo the body through this journey mm. with him. But I also have to be, as I was saying, you know, um, understanding that just because I have a way that I think um, the journey goes great. Sometimes he's, God is wanting to do something different. Mm -hmm. And so surrendering that to him. But I was just listening to somebody say, you know, we get to have our plans, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Mm -hmm. So he, he loves that I get excited about being creative and worship. He just needs yeah. me to, at the end of the day, lay it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have a, like freedom to to linger? You know, once you've once you've had your worship sets, when service starts and you guys are in that worship set and you know and things are going, what happens when you sense that the spirit is saying, "Hey, let's let's rest here"? How do, mm -hmm. do you have the freedom from your church, and how do you guys navigate that? How how do you guys communicate that beforehand or even mm -hmm. afterhand, or how, like even the mist during? How how does that work? Yeah, this actually happened yesterday uh, during our service. Um, which, you know, doesn't happen every week, but happened yesterday. And um, lo lots of times um, during a rehearsal or a run through, I might tell the band like, hey guys, here's the, here's the set, here's the plan. At this moment, have your antennas up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't know, we don't have a, a, um, an arrival time, yeah. it, right. to, so to speak, um, set in stone. That's so, so, for instance, yesterday um, we were doing a song, and uh, what were we doing? We were doing gratitude, mm -hmm. and um, the song ended, and uh, I really felt like we were supposed to go into uh, the hymn "Nothing But the Blood," mm -hmm. and so um, I just I kind of I turned around, told our MD, "Hey, just cut the click," <laughs> and so we just went straight into it, um, and so uh, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of sometimes how it, yeah. like, just yeah. logistically how yeah. it happens, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yes, there is a freedom, yeah. uh, with our church to do that. It doesn't happen every week, you know, right. we're not every week going you know, yeah. into those moments, but Man, the spirit flows like five but, minutes over, yeah. Yeah. over your time every week. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Hey, real quick, shout out MD. Come on. Come on. Come shout on out yes. MD. This is for you. Music director. Juan Jimenez. Yes, uh, Roland Benavidez. On, I'm speaking to uh, every Skylar every Klein and Al Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Every <laughs> empty. You guys are the real MVPs because, yeah. Yeah. like, the flow moments would not yeah. happen. No. Could, yeah. So okay. Um, speaking of my MD and and uh, we have a great team, great great volunteer team, uh, but my MD was out. He was. Uh, in fact, he had he had traveled down to to Texas to do something, and we didn't have an MD that Sunday. And like this is, <laughs> this is the first Sunday in a long time we haven't had an MD. And um, and that specific Sunday there was a place to flow, and I didn't feel 
like we could. I mean, we had the team, you know, but the language that the MD speaks mm -hmm. and the the top back mic and everything, mm -hmm. that, that plays such a vital role. Mm -hmm. um, all that to say, our church is, our pastors, our, our co-lead pastors are incredible and they've really kind of given me a ton of space to yeah. to linger and flow in worship and uh not too much you know that like we still gotta yeah. we still got things to do we have three services on a sunday so we have wow. to we have to try and get for lobby purposes we have to try and get people mm -hmm. you know in and out and um uh all that to say um i'm super grateful we get to but i think that you, what you said it is is perfect we we kind of prepare yes. in rehearsal, um, and we don't have a midweek rehearsal at South Point, um, but we send out um, multi tracks and and some rehearsal things yeah. that our team can can practice. And my language to them every week is, "Hey, be looking at these three songs. Look at this these couple tags, um, and." We'll just see what the Lord does. Yeah. yeah. You know? So, I mean, like, yeah. the, the, there's a little bit better language than that. But I think that as long as we give the vision and the communication yeah. to our team, man, they're, they want to be there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? If, if our cups are over overflowing, if our, if our cups are overflowing, I mean, we're, we're ready. We're ready to pour out. Yeah. And, um, and so um, it's been... I think I lost my train of thought. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we just we we have the freedom to flow. Yeah, we, we set ourselves up for success in rehearsal, mm -hmm. um, and then we use a series of hand signals. Yeah, kind of like some like a, just just a look back or yeah. uh, you know I'm not going to do the hand signals right now oh, unless you want me to. Twice. I will. I will. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me what everybody's signal for bridge is. Yeah. Because chorus is like, you know, that can be a, that can be universal. But yeah. what are your hand signals? So, so I, I do like this. You do? I can't okay. cross my fingers I, very I, I'm well. I'm like, hey, hey, bridge. Let's go, Juan. You know, bridge. First verse. Yeah. I do this. I do three. So yeah. So I've, 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 seen, I've seen the three okay. before. I've seen the three. I'm like, growing in my ability come to on now. signs. You know what Marcy does? Um... <laughs> yes, let's go, dude. I wish I was in your. I just like, trust that listen, we're all we're listening to yeah. the same Holy Spirit. Hey, hey, yeah, kudos, kudos to Juan once again. Yes. Kudos to Juan once again, and and and, and Brayden. Um, you said something. No, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. No, that's good. I think what it is, it's my it's my brain and my personality. I'm I'm trying so hard to focus on where we need to go, and then that extra step of of. Um, it's just how I'm wired. Mm -hmm. I'm getting better because right. it's so you, helpful to let people know what's happening. I think, I think, and and and, and, and I know your team can attest to this. Yeah. Um, I trust Marcy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I trust the worship leader that I'm following. That I'm following. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things you said that I love, and I think if, if we can hang our hat on it for a moment, preparation. Yeah, preparation. When you're building out that set. Um, how do you prepare for a move of God? How do you prepare for that? You know, I mean, uh, I remember when I was early on in my worship leader days, they're like, hey, you've got 20 minutes. I booked up 20 minutes of music. Right. I'm talking, yeah. the song is five minutes, the song is four minutes uh -huh. and 30 seconds, it's, you know. And I, I literally left the set, no room to breathe. Yeah. And it got to a point where I'd get through my entire set and I'm sitting at that last song and I'm like, well, I wanna keep on going. Mm -hmm. I wanna keep on going. And then my pastor had to come to me and say, hey man, I, you know, I, honestly, I love, I love, I, I love how, the way you're leading, uh, but I want you to think about this uh, preparation. Prepare for the yeah. spirit of God to yeah. move. If you've got 20 minutes, give some room for what the spirit yeah. wants to do. It's nothing wrong with putting it all in there, but you've got to give room for for, for the mm -hmm. like what 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 space have you laid aside for for the Father to use? You know, and if you hadn't have like that is one of your greatest strengths. I think Kevin is when you're in that zone of freedom and no expectation and just listening you're very strong to hear the lord and you come up you come out with these choruses and these just spontaneous um exaltation that if you it would be sad if you didn't make that room yeah because that is something that the lord is doing through you mm -hmm. and so it's really like it's important yeah. to make the room that's good i think it's important speaking of preparation 
um, think of it this way, and, I, and I've communicated this to my team before. Um, think of it like I'm throwing Kevin a birthday party. Like I'm, th I'm throwing him a party. He's coming over to my house. And he's on his way, super excited. You know, you walk in the door, half the people that are supposed to be there are there. The food's not there. Mm. Decorations aren't ready. I'm like, oh, Kev, sorry, dude. Uh, uh, you know, right, you know <laughs> just give me 15 more minutes, 15 more minutes, yeah. and, and we'll get. And so I think that's a perfect picture. Like this table, like we have to set the table. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to, to get there, you have that's to set good. the table first. Yeah. And you have to like uh, prepare for the, you know, the party. Yeah. if you will and um no one wants to come to a party that's not ready for them mm -hmm. and so so i i try to communicate to my team team like know these songs like you wrote these songs yeah. Yeah. because mm -hmm. because th then we can go from chorus to bridge to tag to you know and then come out and then sing nothing but the blood yeah and if we feel confident about that shout out the national number system come on um we feel confident about where the progression is going. Mm -hmm. And then that, that really opens the door, you know, practically. Yeah. yeah. So singers, if you're out there, learn the Nashville number system. And an you instrument. Can, you can and speak to the band. You can yeah. talk to your band in a language that most people do not know. Yeah. And it goes a long way. And, and it's easy. Yeah. The Nashville number mm -hmm. system is easy. Yes. I have a few more things on that. Yeah. Just talking about, you know, band and MD. It's important that you trust your band mm -hmm. yeah. because if you don't trust your band to follow you or you don't think that they're um, able to, well, then you're not gonna ever allow yourself to go there. That's right. um, so you have to be able to say, hey, um, I trust you guys 110% yeah. that wherever we go, we're gonna be, it's gonna be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Is, is that trust in your band built or is it just like the, mo the first Sunday you came in, you were like, I trust you. Like, I, I'm, I'm just asking questions, yeah. you know. I think it's built over time. Yeah. I mean. Um, Can and, that process be expedited? You know, it's, for our team, we're, we're introducing a lot of new volunteers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's, that's specifically why I'm asking for, for my team. Like, yeah. so how do I, how, how can I better build trust with the new guys? Do mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would think that you mix them with the, the seasoned mm -hmm. vets, you know, sometimes that doesn't yeah. work out schedule wise, but. Well, I think um, even on just a relational level, um, yeah. it starts with just knowing them yeah. outside of the band mm -hmm. worship setting mm -hmm. um, and knowing them just as people yeah. first, which I know that sounds kind of like cliche, no, but, no, no, no. but, but I know, it's you good. know, as, as worship leaders and people who are in ministry, like it's easy to, um, forget that sometimes right. <laughs> honestly you know like um so yeah i think it starts with with that first and foremost and it does just take time mm -hmm. yeah uh, you know just like any relationship yeah uh, but music is even more can be even more nuanced in a lot of ways so yeah i think it just takes time mm -hmm. i think as worship leaders we got to remember it doesn't really people don't really care how much you know you know yeah. what, what all you can do until they know how much you care mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and i've experienced that even being three years at my own ministry um, the relationships that I've built outside of the church has like literally blessed our stage, That's you know, true. blessed the platform when we're leading worship. Because when I see my drummer, you know, you know, like pouring his heart out on the platform, I know that, man, hey, I can press in because mm -hmm. my drummer's my drummer's in worship. Mm -hmm. we, we can lean in because my drummer's in worship. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, when, my, when, when Juan is like not playing whatsoever, but hands lifted, I can I. I Guys, we're, we're going. Yeah, you know right. what I mean. Breakthrough is happening on the yeah. piano right here. Yes, um, you know, and so I think that level of trust goes goes so far. Yeah. How do you guys, when it comes to time, um, how how does this you know how does it work? What's what's the time like? Uh, how you guys? How is the normal song service? I might if I use for a terrible term, um, at your church. What do you guys? Twenty twenty five minutes, thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean, we I tend to shoot for. Um, 25 okay. at the the max um it usually good, dude. it usually comes out to about 19 to 20. okay um so 20 would 25 would be like the hey yeah. we need to keep going yeah. um point but it usually comes out to about 19 or 20. yeah so we are um a streamed campus so we have so uh we have more time we have about 
25 minutes. It depends on how long uh, OKC campus goes. So we have a lot of freedom. Yeah. We, you know, and I think that God designed that perfectly because <laughs> I was probably going to go 25 minutes either yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> either way. <laughs> Pastor can um, wait. <laughs> you but, can uh, wait. The stream is ready. Like, yeah. <laughs> we'll come in like, halfway through. The stream was ready 12 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I don't yeah. feel uh, rushed yeah. at all. But, um, but I also, if in turn, if I have to, wherever I am, I do try to honor the time. So I, I don't have to worry about it at my home campus, which is a huge blessing. But if I was to fill in for Kevin or whatever, I definitely, to a T, am trying to honor the time there because yeah. I know it's so important. You yeah. don't want to create, um, divi- you know, you don't want to create this stressful yeah. situation right before the pastor. He's he's in this zone. Yeah. And uh, and then if you create the situation where he's um, he's fighting battles, sitting there, you know, mentally having to think about time and all this mm-hmm. stuff. It's like, man, well, I didn't really set you up for success. Why yeah. would I? <laughs> yeah, why yeah. Would I, yeah. Why would I? Yeah. Why would I? Hurt him. You know. And so I do try to, yeah. to honor that. It's yeah. it's it's something to you know trying to like I said obviously leaving space for your pastor. Um, I, I was I was leading worship one time, and. Uh, the pastor said, hey, man, just do what you do. And I was like, man. Okay. First off, the fact that you had that trust. Well, yes. Yeah, there's so, more to that story. So. Okay. More to that story. <laughs> more to that. He said, do what so. you do. And I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. So I think we may have probably sang. Uh, so my favorite song is How Great Is Our God. I mean, it, it's mm. Thomas. I can sing it every day, all day. Yeah. Vertical, right to Jesus. Right. No. Um, and so we started that song, and then I, we ended somewhere else maybe 30 minutes later. And now, mind you, pastor said, do your thing. Do your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, worship ends, it's, we're, we're 30 something odd minutes down. And uh, he's like, I was supposed to be up 15 minutes ago. And how do, how do you mm-hmm. navigate, hey, I'm trusting you to guide and lead us in worship. And then, you know, maybe I, even I would say it was mm-hmm. an unspoken expectation that, yeah, hey, you wanted right. me, but, how do you navigate that? Because even my pastor now, he's like, hey, man, lead us in worship. But I still want to be honoring sure. because yeah. I know and my, my philosophy is this, like, I believe worship helps people <laughs> see Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's a picture that's painted. Worship helps people see Jesus. Where when the pastor gets up, he wants people to hear, yeah. hear, hear Jesus. And so mm-hmm. learning how to navigate that tension. Zach Hicks has a book out called The Worship Pastor. And he literally just says it's two different roles that are mir- they're married. They're married together. You as the worship pastor and the senior pastor or teaching pastor, mm, yeah. you guys have to marry this relationship because what happens is when someone comes, that you like they're coming, you know, obviously to worship, but expecting something. And the more intentional we can be about hearing from the Lord and responding, the yeah. better someone's, you know, chances are of life transformation. Yeah. And so, how do you guys navigate um, just working with your pastor? Yeah. Um, we have a we have a service planning meeting. Uh, not really planning. We have a, a service run through meeting mm-hmm. every Thursday. Yeah. So, so every Thursday at ten a.m. we the our pastors get in get in a room and we walk down exactly how we want the flow to go mm-hmm. on Sunday. And in that meeting, it's my responsibility to be as honest and mm-hmm. open as possible. Like pastor, like this is kind of what I'm thinking. You know, right here could be. And our planning center, our script is set up that it has the times, mm-hmm. and so. Like uh, you guys said, 25 minutes. We don't really have a. We normally run about 22 to 28, maybe 28 is too much, but uh, around that window mm-hmm. from worship and and just kind of the ministry time there, uh, uh, and that will that leads to another question that I'll, I'll ask right after this. But um, our service planning meeting is really kind of where we dial yeah. dial that in. Yeah, like, yeah. okay, well, that song's 10 minutes. Okay, well. Can we can we do something about that maybe and and maybe cut something there so we can we can like time this out a little yeah. bit better and you know there's some Sundays that you know uh, in a couple of weeks we're gonna have a Valentine's Day panel and so um, and uh, so so like worship will be a little bit notched down probably that yeah. Sunday I don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah. the Lord's gonna move either way and. Uh, but so that that's kind of the yeah. Well, um, 
Let's see. So for us, we we get the flow. Like I said, we have a very uh, sp uh, Holy Spirit led um, experience, and so uh, we have an idea of how things are going to go. And Thursday, like you said, we find out this is we're pretty sure it's going to go this way. Yeah. And then um, what has been really cool to uh, learn to be open and and when you do have the right attitude you see the fruit yeah. of like mm -hmm. if your pastor is sensing something it's because he's really yeah. sensing something mm -hmm. and just go you know um what do you have to lose mm -hmm. you know oh. um i just heard somebody say today god is not gonna punish you for going in the direction that you think that you're trying to honor him your heart is to towards him yeah. and so i have nothing to lose um following my pastor right. Right. <laughs> and so right. so what we'll find out like we'll, we sometimes at our campus because we're a little bit later than the other one, we'll find out oh they actually went back into worship here and they weren't playing and we're going to do this song and da, da. so we're just kind of scrambling and maybe yeah. everybody was just sit, you know sitting and then we realize oh we're going to be back up there and so everybody just like adjusts and they just and but it's it's led with this attitude of um expectation yeah. of uh joy and even if you do run into like we're all human mm -hmm. so sometimes you do get in so you can fight this sometimes this mental like wait a minute that wasn't the plan you know like that comes in that's an intruding thought yeah. Yeah. um but you don't have to entertain it and you don't have to go with that and you're like no 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 I follow the Holy Spirit and I also trust that my pastor, mm -hmm. he may have heard something. I don't want to miss it. Yeah. I don't want to miss it. Yeah. So, um, and then all I was going to say is um, the church uh, that I was at, a church that I got to be a part of for a long time, um, uh, Life Church, which was uh, years previous. It was an honor to be there for the time I was there. And, and that's where I was mentored by Trent. And I remember when we had a freer experience and it was like 23, 25 minutes, we were just like high on the hog. And then, then we, and then, <laughs> that's just, oh yeah, come on Marcy. We were like, man, we're so good. And then we found out, hey, we're gonna be adding services and we're tightening this up. And he was told, uh, we have 18 minutes. And you know, I wasn't in charge. And so I thought, why is that? <laughs> you know, and what was so cool is that he he came and he talked to the band and he said, I said, how come you're not like upset? How come you're not whatever? And he goes, well, you know, I talked to the Lord about it and I just figured um, I'm gonna have to enter in way earlier. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna have to get there already mm. having entered in and he said i'm going to use every minute in mm. that 18 minutes yes, yeah. and he said i'm going to honor it and it's going to be awesome and it was yeah. and i just i man i learned so much yeah and i just that humility he yeah. uses more mm -hmm. with our humility yeah. than he does with our ideas and plans mm. yes yeah. yeah um when when you guys are at your churches is there how do you guys feel about sunday morning being uh being one of those free flowing, because there's a, there's a culture that's out right now where everyone wants to just flow in worship. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to flow in worship, we want to soak in worship for yep. thirty Lay minutes. Down. You know, um, and, and 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 I love that. I, I, I love that. I love when I can just sit and honestly for me when I can just ball my eyes out mm -hmm. in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it be the most joyous, happy, convicting cry I've ever had. I love that. But I think there's a there's a place for that. Do you guys? Mm -hmm. How 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 do you guys? How do you guys navigate that? Is that like a hey Wednesday night services are are you know deeper nights? Or, you know yeah. Sunday morning is a, just a, a culmination of the week we're celebrating because there are unbelievers who who come to our churches mm -hmm. and you know to see everybody you know face down on the floor you know speaking in tongues you know <laughs> however it is can be like yeah yeah <laughs> what they got going on oh, up yeah. in here yeah, yeah. Right. is that a snake or a person <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, think, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think every church has a different conviction. Yeah, I yeah. think that every church is different. And uh, for us, like those environments are more um, pushed in like a prayer service or a worship night yeah. environment. Now, we still flow. Yeah. We, we, we still flow. Uh, but for the most part, that that's kind of the environment. Yeah. And, I, you know, I've been, you know, I've been to churches, you know, that, that their Sunday morning is like that. And I think that that's awesome for them. It's just, yeah. it's not our 
the yeah. burden of our pastors. That's cool. Right. That's yeah, I think it all comes down to church culture. It's yeah. awesome. At the, at the end of the day, um, I mean, as a worshiper and as a worship leader, yeah. uh, of course, I want every Sunday morning to be the That's most good. incredible, you know, mm -hmm. God breathed on experience of our lives. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, and kind of what you guys are saying, like with the with the long 30 minute flow set. Of course, I mean, that sounds amazing yeah. to me. Um, but ultimately, I think it, it comes down to your church's specific culture. Right. Yeah. And there's a balance because I, I don't I don't think that we should. What's the right word? Like, um, I guess, tone back our worship. Yeah, quench because, the spirit. Quench yeah. the spirit mm -hmm. for fear of what guests might think. Yeah. Um, but we should have guests in mind yeah. at the same time. So there, it's a fine line, yeah. I feel like, between yeah. between those two things. Uh, it's it's, it's constant learning. I think um, uh, I heard a pastor say, evidence of the Holy Spirit is fruit. He's like, when, when you guys are leading worship, you, you should be uh, praying for fruit. You should be praying mm -hmm. that God would produce fruit from this moment, that somebody's life would be transformed, mm -hmm. that they would come to a deeper encounter with Christ. And, and that's the fruit you want to see. Yeah. Um, I think so many times in worship settings, we look for these physical responses, mm -hmm. tears, yeah. hands yeah. up, mm -hmm. and, and that's not fruit. That's not fruit. Be, anybody it's a physical be response. You know, yeah, and I think... Is, uh, yeah. And, and so I think when we're, you know, when we talk about flowing in the spirit in these moments, it's, it's you know, Lord, I just pray that fruit is produced from it. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing more, That's nothing good. more than what I, you know, what I can see. Um, so are, how are we wrapping on time? Are we doing good on time? Okay. I want to ask a few questions that are not on this list. Let's go. Phone down. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, what would you, what would you say to, going rogue. what would you say to some younger worship leaders? People who are joining worship teams, young pastors who are stepping into this vocation, uh, how can you encourage them? Uh, yeah. Because I think some uh, worship leaders are siloed. They're, this this is not happening all over the country. Right. Worship leaders coming together to have mm -hmm. conversations yeah. about church. Yeah, that's right. um, it's very much a territorial space yeah. at times. You know, where hey, I, no, 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 my drummer played at your church. You know, right. Or, or, <laughs> my, you need a guitar player. <laughs> um, how do you guys? How can you? You know. Give some advice to some young worship leaders yeah. out there. You gotta hold on tight. I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> no one to hold them, no one to fold them. That no one to walk away. I was just joking. <laughs> just joking. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. You gotta yeah, let go. Man. What did they say? You let release the butterfly and yeah. This is when the podcast you, really starts. Yeah. Or how's that go? Yeah. You release it and it turns out that butterfly loves a lot of flowers. Yeah. Um anybody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think for young worship leaders, um relationships. Mm -hmm is you know so important i think building equity not only with the, your church because i think i always say like you can't lead people that you don't know oh that's you, so good you, you know so so it, it's uh, we watch videos on youtube of, of these churches stadiums full of people just you know and so we think oh i want that for my church and and then you come in you don't talk to anyone you go to the green room you go from yeah. green room to backstage backstage to, and then you wonder why no one's connecting yeah well, because they don't know you yeah they they, they don't know you and Boy. so if you want to really know me then know me off the platform right mm -hmm. like that this is not me this is mm -hmm. this is a product yeah of 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 what the lord is doing in my heart That's and, so good. and so like be available and and what I mean by that is like be available in the lobby before and after service, mm -hmm. um, but be available for your team. Yeah. If you come in and guns are blazing and you're like, hey, I want this, this, and this, and this. Like, Who are you again? Mm -hmm. Like, right. no, build equity with all. Yeah. All all of them, and because you can't, you can't. First off, you can't lead some. You can't lead anywhere that you haven't already been. Right. Yeah. And you can't lead people that you don't know. Yeah. You can sing and perform really good and um but again, the fruit. Where's yeah. the fruit? Come on. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah, I mean I would I would say everything that Aaron just said. Um I mean ultimately it starts with with your time with God. Which is easy for us to forget no, as worship leaders it's because it, um you know, I feel like for a, a pastor, their their job is 
preaching the Bible. For us, it's singing songs, yeah. um, which you can be a great song leader and not have a relationship with God at all. Preach. Um, you can, um, or at least have a very, very shallow yeah. one. Yeah. And so I would say, I mean, it, it feels cliche or maybe obvious to say, but that's step one. Um, I think if you are growing in that, nothing else matters. And if you're not growing in that, nothing really yeah. else matters. Um, I would say also what Marcy's been, been saying, humility is a huge thing. Um, I have been doing this for almost 15 years and I still feel like I don't know much, <laughs> you know, like I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. yeah still yeah. growing. Like you should always be learning, always be, mm -hmm. yeah. be growing. Um, I'd say lastly, uh, if you're just starting to get into it, just take opportunities that you're given, yeah. you know, like if you're, it, it kind of goes in with the humility part too. Like nothing is, is too quote small. Right. I mean, I, I started leading worship and like I mentioned earlier, I was the, I wasn't even like the main acoustic player. I was acoustic guitar too. <laughs> and I didn't know any of the songs, you know? So like, so like, don't, don't, um, don't, uh, don't look past the small beginnings. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. good. I like that. Um, I think if you're, I think if you're an, a worship leader, what well, kind of in your situation, three years in, wouldn't you say you've had to learn to hold loosely mm -hmm. two people Oof. and that they're, they, they are talking to the Lord about where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, just like that butterfly analogy, yeah. it was never yours. It yeah. was, it was, it, it doesn't belong to you mm -hmm. and they don't belong to you. They belong to Dude. the Lord. Yeah. And that's very hard because you care, man, I, oh. I had a situation and you know, I had, um, all, all of these, um, people that I felt like I was so excited because, um, I was getting to pour into their life and they were all around the same age yeah. and I was just so pumped and I was probably getting just a slight amount of my identity from it. They were great it. talent. Like yes. <laughs> amazing, amazing worship leaders, by the way. Like, Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And, um, <clears throat> and the, just because of the season also i should have known i mean they were in their young 20s and i somehow thought we were going to be together forever <laughs> you know and then but literally within a, like a period of uh six to eight weeks it was just like the lord just oh, allowed they were in and out. i mean oh, like calling him to some amazing just things. different oh, right. things and yeah. a lot of it was really good yeah. and some of it was hard because it just wasn't my decision yeah. but like trusting that mm. It, they um that the seeds were planted everything i was supposed to do that yeah. assignment is over yeah. yep. and you also need to look that look at that with your um with your band that this is also an assignment that you guys are in together yeah, right. and it may not be forever mm -hmm. and it's certainly not going to be forever for everybody yeah. um there are see life is seasons and so really just learning that like they love you, but they love, they need to love God mm -hmm. and be obedient to him more yeah. than pleasing you. Yeah. And so, uh, taking once again, taking offense out of it right. and just holding people loosely. Yeah. It's very hard. Offense is good. Yeah, man. I, I would tell, uh, I would tell a worship leader, um, man, find a leader to get under and submit. Mm -hmm. Like find a leader to get underneath and allow mm -hmm. that person to pour into you, and also allow allow those challenges to make you a better, a better right. a better worship pastor, a, a better pastor overall. Um, I can I can recall um, some times in ministry where uh, there was there was tension, but it was tension that I welcomed because I knew that my leader was trying to guide me, to strengthen me, and to like literally put more responsibility on me to carry the mantle that I was carrying. Mm -hmm. And so I would mm -hmm. first say that, I would first say that like, you, you're not gonna, you're gonna come out the gate one in a swing, but you're gonna, you're gonna strike out way more times because you, you're gonna pick the best songs, the newest things that are out there, and no one's gonna know it. And you're gonna wonder why people aren't yeah. joining with you, right? You're gonna get up there and you're gonna like, and I'm just thinking about all the times where I was like, dude, we gotta sing this song. Elevation just hit it, dude. Brandon Lake smashed it. There's a crazy drum solo. <laughs> and you get up there Sunday morning, you're like, 
Yeah, that was, that was, we're not <laughs> smashing it. <laughs> What's no. There's no smashing. But I would say when when you have a leader who's who's willing to give you some constructive criticism and great feedback on, yeah. hey man, and not not hey you shouldn't have done this. Hey, tell me your thought process mm -hmm. behind it, and then let me come back and tell you my thought, pro thought, thought process behind yeah, it. Yeah, that's hard. I think that's one thing. I think the other thing is um, is like you said, man, building relationships with your, with your mm -hmm. team. Um, when as a worship pastor, um, when I'm pastoring my team, and that's off the stage, it's not leading them in song, but that's off the stage. Um, I, I, I get to see some of that relationship rub off, like on the platform. I can see where, Hey man, I, you're going through something, man. Let's, let's take some, let's take some time off. Man. And I can see where they appreciate that. And I also appreciate them for receiving me as a leader mm -hmm. right now. Like I said, it's been three years in my current ministry. I think my team receives, um, receives that. And so I would say those two things. And then lastly, I would throw out, um, Man, you can have fun. Mm -hmm. You can have fun yeah. as a worship leader. You know, mm -hmm. spend the time with the word, you know, spend time and with your teams, but also, man, have fun. If you can't do this and have fun, then yeah. it's yeah. it's it's not there's no joy in that. So oh, yes. Yeah. You guys got anything to add? Anything? So as far we talked about like worship up front. So my church is looking at different ways to add worship element ministry moments just in, in in our Sunday morning services. And so normally we're like worship up front, you know, announcements message. So you get do you guys do worship message, more worship yeah. or Maybe so kinda, one worship song message, three yeah. worship. We yeah. al we alternate that, so that's that's kind of that's kind of fluid with our pastor. So he may say, "Hey man, I I, I want to go into a response time, yeah. you know, some, you know, ministry time after that." And so then you know we kind of make that transition. Hey, we'll cut worship a little bit up top, so that we have some room yeah. to kind of go into a response afterwards. Um, but that is maybe happening twice a week, and then there are times where he'll he'll text me before service starts and say, "Hey." I, I want to do a response time. Yeah. Can, can can you and and that's kind of my cue. Hey guys, let's find a let's find a breaking point in that set so we can give some room for for some more worship at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that I always have to navigate is okay, am I am I bringing a full band out after this message? Mm -hmm. right. Because I think sometimes when we think mm -hmm. response time and call to ministry, but people see full band out there, it's like okay, we're going all the way in, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I think sometimes there's just a hey, let's mm -hmm. just sit. An intimate moment. Yeah. And yeah. so I'll say, hey, just prime this Sunday, um, our pastor said, Hey, I want band out after the message. And at our at our, our Edmond campus, the band was ready to go. But at the broadcast campus, I was like, Hey, I think this is just keys. Um, even though we had scheduled set up for a band. And I think you just kinda have to sense, okay, mm -hmm. what is the Lord what is the Lord trying to do? And, mm -hmm. and is am I is is the full band, which is great, going to be a distraction to somebody mm -hmm. who's really trying to like literally just ponder on the message and and just receive mm -hmm. from the Lord? Yeah. And so I think that's like a healthy healthy space to be in. And I'm I ask I ask I ask my team, hey, what do you think, man? My MD, yeah. you want to bring full band out or just just me and you or you know an acoustic? So yeah, we do it every now and then. Whenever my pastor has said that, because we we've done it a few times, and again we're really looking at doing that more more and more yeah. in 2024. Um, but um, I think just uh, like n understanding like where the message is like um, really kind of dictates yeah. like w what what the response could be. And so I think it's good. That's good. For us, uh, we typically do um, three songs before message and then we always plan on one after message. It's almost always full band, um, but she talking about, you know, mixing things up. It's got, my, it's got me thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what we also do is once a month we uh, have communion together as a church. Yeah. So that's kind of built into the rhythm yeah, of yes. our church is the first Sunday of every month is communion. So for those Sundays, we do three songs, message, song, communion, another song. Okay. okay. Yeah, so five. five songs. Nice. Yeah. Let's go. Um, <laughs> which is, which is, it's <laughs> Get a, a five song set. Can be, Come on. It can be a lot sometimes, but it's great. Um, but one thing I've, um, considered doing and have wanted to do um, more is put more songs on the back set mm. because um, I mean, I believe that uh, we, our worship is very rich after we've heard the word. Mm -hmm. And so not that it can't be rich before it's all I'm saying, yeah. but after we've 
But our heard. attention, our focus. I like that. After we've sat through a message and we've heard the word and we've um, been digesting it, yeah. I've experienced that it's in those moments where I don't want the worship to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're wish. capture full. Right. I'm, like, I'm like, come on, just one more song. Like, why are we stopping yeah, after yeah. one song? I like that. So I think I want to try that. I mean, we've yeah. have, we've considered going two and three or three and three. That's a lot also. Yeah. But well, That's um, a good Sunday, though. But yeah, I mean, so we haven't fully done that yet. We've done it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but yeah. that's just, I know, another tweak that we've tried to, nice. to consider. So I like yeah. that. One more question. Prayer teams, prayer and worship, I feel like a handshake, you know, on a, on a Sunday morning. And so um, do you guys ever have your prayer teams up during worship? Like invite them, hey, church, our, our prayer team's going to come forward as we just continue to worship. Let's, you know, connect, or yeah. wh whatever that looks like. What do you guys do that? I, I think it's I think it's I think it's perfect. Um, at our church, we call down either after the first song, we'll have what we call family time or just like a greeting um, uh, where we, hey, turn around, high five somebody, you know, yeah. high five somebody, tell them how excited you are to see yeah. them. I greet our online campus, um, but we're calling our prayer teams down. I think it is it has also changed the culture in our church a little bit. I think it's shifted the culture. I think for a season when we when I first started coming to Victory, um, we would call our prayer team down, but it was there was no intentionality to it, you know? It was just, hey, mm. prayer teams are gonna be on either side of the stage. You almost don't even need to introduce them. Yeah, yeah, you know, and they were there. And and people were coming, but we had to really start inviting people like, hey, this is a moment where when you're hearing from the Lord and you want you want to like connect and partner with somebody for prayer, like they're here for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, had, we've revamped our prayer team at our church. So specifically, they are a part of our, uh, our worship time. Um, from the start, we actually start welcome, like we do our family time a greeting in the beginning of worship, kind of like online host, and we call our prayer team down then, then, and people start coming. Uh, it's yeah. become a culture in mm -hmm. our church where people are like, oh, I'm I'm coming for prayer. Uh, third third Sundays, we have our prophetic team come down. Like, I'm coming for prayer. I need a word from the Lord. And so I think it's a, mm -hmm. I, I, I do think it's a, it's the best handshake in the church, the yeah. prayer team and the worship team, um, because they're so closely intertwined. Right. So closely intertwined. So we call them down. We call our prayer team down. So I think oh, that's so good. I think that at times I've been discouraged when people don't engage with the prayer teams as much as I, f I feel. Yeah. Here we go on feelings. But I feel like they should. Mm -hmm. And so, um, man, just sounds to me like yeah. it's just over time it's just yeah. built and built and built. And I mean, we even stop. I mean, there have been moments where I'll call the prayer team down, but I will actually start the prayer there. I'll start the prayer in the middle of my worship set yeah. where the band is playing whatever intro to the song and I'll, hey, can we just loop that? I'm, I'm going to pray over those who didn't want to come down. And I'm also going to extend the invitation again, like, hey, if you really need prayer, no, we believe in it. Like our culture is we be, we pray to a big God and expect big results. Right. Like this is the, this is what we believe in here at our church. And mm -hmm. so I'll I'll lead that by example mm -hmm. and pray, pray those prayers That's good. on, you know, from the platform that. Mm -hmm. That may not be the, 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 it's not the norm all the time, but I also recognize that most people just need an invitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just, they just need it. They just need an invitation to engage um, because they want to, they just need that invitation. So it, it's, it's worked wonders in our, in our ministry. I love that. I didn't grow up with a, <clears throat> I didn't grow up in a environment where we had prayer teams. And so when I got to be, um, older and got to visit other, you know, might visit a church or something. And it was new to me that, you know, I'm a believer. And, but when I found out that like you could come up and engage with somebody and they could, and that they have prophetic gifting and that they might be able to speak into something without, without you just, you know, vomiting all over them about your <laughs> life. Um, I was like, so, uh, excited yes. about that and because i was so curious and hungry and i didn't even know i was hungry for it until it was available yeah. and then i found myself um i think sometimes for for a lot of people it's the first place that they experience um holy spirit connection yeah. i remember when i was in the <clears throat> i remember when i was in the seventh grade and um at a uh 
at a youth camp and we were finally, maybe it was ninth grade, and we were talking about the Holy Spirit at a Baptist youth camp. It was a very big deal. Whoa. And I had didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Um, and so, and the way that he spoke about the Holy Spirit, I was just like, oh, that is real. Like, mm. I can know God like that, you know? And so then they had this opportunity afterwards where people were standing up in the front and you could pray with somebody. And all I did was just walk down and I just hugged this lady. And, um, and I remember, I believe she was, she was one of, one of the only deaf people there in the week. And she was standing there and I hugged her. And all of a sudden I just felt, it was so unlike anything I'd ever experienced. And I had no reference for this, but I was, I was hugging her and all of a sudden she, she just put her arms around me. And all of a sudden I just felt the presence of the Lord hugging me. He was just holding me. And um, once you have a taste of that, that, that marks you and changes you and you're hungry for more in your own personal life. I mean, I went home and I was like, Holy Spirit, I will say yes, yes to whatever, to, yes. whatever you ask I'm yeah, in. And he actually used that yes and started moving in my yeah. life and speaking more and more. And it took this lady standing there um, for me to have an experience like that. And so I think it's just, vital yeah. whether or not we think enough people are showing up to do it having it available yeah. yeah because you never know how it's going to transform somebody's worship and what if i hadn't had those experiences yeah. and what god did in my life after that yeah. so i think it's pretty vital i consider yeah. our, my team intercessors yeah. you know what i mean like we, we we're intercessors we 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 sing the prayers that people can't pray we're intercessors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Marcia. It's just, I mean, like, woo. Yeah. I go back, and I had forgotten about that. I'm like, wow, that did happen. Like, uh, I was just never the same yeah. because of what was possible in my relationship with yeah. the Lord. And the fact that God uses, I say, you know, sometimes God's like, I just need your look. Mm. You know, like, He is going to do the work. Right. But he's like, I just need your hands. I'm just going to use your lips, you know, just show up. Yeah. And so that's what that lady did. She just stood there Man. and he used her. And so I think about that. When we talk about the prayer team on Sunday, I'm like, what is going to happen if somebody actually engages? Yes. Yeah. Lord, let that happen yeah. tenfold. Yeah. I, there was, it was, that's, I mean, I was marked in an environment like that. Where it was a it was a twenty four hour burn. You guys remember those? Oh yeah. And they just yeah. went in. Yeah. And uh, we walked in, meet a bunch of young rats, and you know, and I was like, "What is going on? What is what environment is?" And the Holy Spirit marked me that night, and I have never been the same since. Yes. Wow. I have never been the same since. Mm. And uh, and. And it just takes a yes. It just takes, you know, that that step yeah. of faith. And then the Lord is so good. The Spirit He's is so, so good. good to just hug us mm. when we need a hug. Yes. Man. Man. Uh, I love having you guys here. Um, I appreciate this. I appreciate C now and Amy and her yes. leadership and just and being a part of this. Um, this is something great, man. Uh, yeah. For those of you who are watching online, listen, uh, we want to be a resource for you. We want to be a resource for you. So please email, text, subscribe, all this um, to the See Now, the Table podcast. And we want to be able to support you here in the Oklahoma City area and all around the world. Um, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for yeah, just coming to share. Coming to share. I'm super excited about what God is doing in this season. Yes. Not just for my church, but I know he's doing something great in your church really as is. well. And I look forward to seeing the fruit of that yeah. uh, across this country. We shouldn't need it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. See you.